Well, hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. And today is the second video in the vintage science fiction series that I'm doing. And today's uh, vintage science fiction book is The Deep Range by Arthur C. Clarke. Now, this is a science fiction novel that was released in 1957. And uh, it's unusual for an Arthur C. Clarke novel in that it takes place entirely on the planet Earth in the seas. You see, in the future, a hundred years in the future, at least a hundred years from 1957, uh, the world's oceans are completely in control uh, by, are completely controlled by humankind. And the wardens of the sea uh, basically spend a lot of time herding whales. And they herd whales like cattle, they breed whales like cattle, and fortunately they also slaughter whales like cattle. Uh, so it's an interesting novel. A lot of undersea daring do, because these wardens of the sea, they're always getting themselves into all kinds of trouble. Now in old books like this, you can do no better than to read the exciting synopsis on the back. So that's what I will do in a melodramatic fashion, as usual. Underwater Challenge. He was a misfit, a spaceship engineer who had developed such a fear of outer space that he could no longer function. Permanently separated from his wife and children on Mars, he faced a terrible future back on Earth, unless, through psychiatry, he could create a new life as a warden of the ocean's depths. Taught with excitement and suspense, this is a thrilling novel of tomorrow and a fascinating picture of the weird and sometimes terrifying life beneath the seas in a future when submarine patrols harvest the, wor the water's wealth to feed the world. And there's a blurb from the San Francisco Chronicle here. Superior adventure fiction by one of the best performers in the field. And that would be Arthur C. Clarke, one of the best performers in the field. Now this is an interesting book. Uh, it is about a character called Walter Franklin. He is the astronaut who had suffered a terrible, terrible accident out in space. And he was traumatized. Basically this guy has post-traumatic stress disorder. And uh, he is separated from his, uh, his wife and children because they lived on Mars and they were born on Mars. And because of the difference between gravity on Earth and Mars, he can come back to Earth uh, but she can't because gravity, the Earth's gravity would just kill her or something. So they are separated and he can never go back out into space because he's so traumatized. So basically, uh, the government uh, gets him trained uh, to be a, a warden of the sea. Uh, because they figure, hey, that's a good job for this guy. Um, and so it, this novel is divided into three different parts. I would like to say that each part is like a separate story or builds on each other, but basically there's a lot going for this book, but the plot is pretty much non-existent, at least as far as a plot that goes throughout the whole book. And this is not a long book. Uh, how, how long is this book? It's 175 pages in this copy. Uh, most of these old science fiction novels were, were not very long. And so you have three different parts. Now the first part, is kind of one story because like through this whole book I'm like what is this book about uh, there's a lot of subplots in this book but not one overarching plot yeah uh, so that was not great uh, the first section the first part is actually about something it's basically a story of Walter Franklin and how he has to overcome his stress, his post-traumatic stress disorder, through the help of psychiatrists and all these guys that are helping him out, and uh, be able to function again and become a warden of the sea, which is apparently the perfect job for this guy, everybody says. And he does it. He overcomes his stress. And the other two sections are about other things. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's like a lot of, this is based off a short story. I haven't read the short story, but I have read it in the Wikipedia article. I read about this a little bit.
because I wanted to find out what the story with this book was. And apparently this is based on a shorter story and it's expanded uh, from the shorter story, but it reads like several short stories because there are all these subplots throughout the whole book. The whole book is not about one thing or anything. You know, I kept waiting. I'm like, okay, when are we going to get to what this book's about? Okay, are we there yet? What's this book about? Oh, hell, the book's over. So it was, uh, it was interesting. So three different parts. First part is basically a story about, it's a story about this guy and his post-traumatic stress disorder and his, his overcoming it. And the second two parts about other things. Looking for a giant squid, maybe, an undersea monster that they never find. And the third part, uh, he rises in the ranks and becomes a bureaucrat, which is about as exciting as that sounds. And uh, in the third part, it does have some of the most interesting stuff in it uh, because throughout this whole book, they're just slaughtering whales like crazy, like it's no big deal. And finally, in the third part, they're saying, oh, wait a minute. Is it right to slaughter these intelligent animals for food? Maybe we can do something else. Maybe that's not so, such a great thing to do uh, in our futuristic society. Like maybe we could find, oh, I don't know, some other things to eat. So there was some of that in there, and that was interesting. Um, there's some good things about this book, though, uh, to go along with the plotlessness of it. Um, Arthur C. Clarke has never been my idea of a great writer. He's not the greatest writer in the world. But there is something to be said about clarity in prose. His prose style is very clear, very direct. Um, you know exactly what's going on at all times. Uh, and that is nice occasionally uh, to get that. And he does have that in spades. This is pretty well written. Um, but there, there are some problems in it uh, besides the plotlessness uh, that you find in a lot of Arthur C. Clarke books and that the characters, even, even Walter Franklin, who has all these problems and uh, has to overcome all of these issues. Um, he's not that interesting of a character. He's just kind of, you know, you never really learn, okay, too much about this guy. Um, you know he's traumatized because they tell you uh, and he tells you, but it, you never really feel it. Um, his characters aren't completely one-dimensional. I wouldn't accuse them of being that, but they're not too fleshed out either. This book also, you can really tell it's written in the 1950s. There's basically one woman female character in this movie, in this movie, in this book. There's one female character, uh, Indra, who starts off being a great character. Um, she's a scientist. She's super independent. She's super smart. She's, she seems a lot sharper than uh, Walter Franklin does in the beginning of the book. That's for sure. He has a breakdown at one point and she has to rescue him. Um, you, get the, you get the feeling right away that Indra would make a great warden of the sea and maybe just, you know, ship off this Walter guy and just hire Indra. You know, she'd be great. But of course, because this was written in the 1950s, she has to fall madly in love with Walter and then they get married and then she has to leave her career behind and raise the children... There are a couple mentions of other female characters. Uh, you know, they're, they're brief glancing appearances here and there. But basically, it's a man's world in the deep range uh, because everybody's a man. All the wardens are men. All the bureaucrats are men. All the government people are men. Everybody's a man. You get the feeling that they're all white guys too. Although he never really describes too many of these people physically that much. Not that much, so I guess. But yeah, you get the pretty good idea that it's all white guys and that's it. And that's a very 1950s thing. And it's interesting because Arthur C. Clarke in this book was speculating a bit on some social change, mostly having to do with uh, how we eat. Uh, he was talking about vegetarianism at a time when I guess that wasn't really talked about that much. And, uh, he was talking about the morality of uh, keeping animals in captivity and, and eating them uh, when we really don't have to. 
Um, so that was some interesting social speculation, but there are some basic things that a lot of writers, and he's one of them in the 1950s, just could not imagine changing. They could not imagine women ever being equally social, socially with men. They just couldn't imagine it. He couldn't. You get the idea that he wouldn't be against the idea, but he just can't, he can't, uh, he can't picture it. He, he can't picture a world where every human being was equal. And I know we haven't reached that point yet, but at least we could speculate about it. You know, we're aiming for that, right? He wasn't even in the ballpark on that one. He just, he couldn't conceive of that kind of social change. And so it, basically the future is just the 1950s in the future. Uh, which is, when you read a lot of these books, as I have, that's pretty much how it was. Uh, a lot of these writers, they just, who were writing at this time, just could not conceive uh, a, a, a different social order in the future uh, that did not involve white guys being in control of everything. Um, and everybody else just barely mentioned or not mentioned at all. And, and, and <laughs> what? Don't you know I'm, I'm making a video here? Doesn't even know I'm making a video. It's like they don't even care. It's like you don't even care, Pumpsy. Where was I? Oh yeah, I was talking about the social stuff. Well, you get the idea of what I was talking about. And we're gonna be seeing a lot of that, I suspect, in the future videos of, of uh, old 1950s science fiction. So that's just an interesting thing that just kinda reading it now, uh, in 2021, that you just really, really, really notice uh, the role or the non-role of women and anybody other than a white person in this book. Um, none of the characters are really that interesting, I have to say. Um, Walter Franklin, not an interesting guy. Indra really literally was the most interesting person in this book, and after the first after the first uh, section, you don't really see much of her except in her role as a wife. Uh, like I said, there's some good stuff in this book, but the but basically you go through the whole book and there's like no real, no real plot. Just a bunch of little subplots to the whole thing. There's some adventure stuff in there. There's some exciting moments, that's for sure, but it just doesn't, doesn't go anywhere uh really it didn't to me so kind of a disappointment the deep range disappointment the deep range um not his best work not terrible it's well written uh, but just you know i can i can see why it's not one of those arthur c clark books that we really think about too much nowadays he did he did books that were a lot better than this one still it was interesting and uh, yeah, so that's The Deep Range. That is my review of The Deep Range. Don't think I have too much more to say about that one. So thank you for joining me once again. I will return once more uh, on Sunday for the Sunday Penguin when we talk about a very different book. Uh, so yeah, I will catch you then. You guys have a great day. Bye, guys.